Mm-hmm. Oh man, we live, baby. We live. We lit, baby. We lit. What's good, family tree? Let me know you're up in the building simply by hitting the like button. Yeah, let's get it, baby. Let's get it. So, real quickly, I'm not here for a long time, but I'm here for a real good time. My whole purpose of actually doing this show. Um, what am I? Okay, yeah, my purpose of doing this show right now is to see what you guys are saying, okay, real quickly, because we're supposed to be doing a whole Ramadan series, and I am slightly bored. (laughs) Nah, what I'm actually saying is that I would actually like you guys to come on uh, and talk some talks with me, um... And let it be a quick show. Let it be a nice little quick show. So I get you guys to actually come on. And if you would like to debate each other, come on in and debate each other. If you'd like to question each other, come on in and question each other um, as well. Okay. I will be going through the comment section, actually, um, because there's a few comments that I've seen people send in uh, uh, for questions and so forth. And, um, yeah, so I'm going to just quickly, I'll go through those, like, while we're waiting for people to come through. And uh, yeah, we'll go through those. Let me get this a bit closer. You might not be hearing me. So let me know in the comment section if you're hearing me loud and clear. Um, so what I would like, yeah, again, is for you guys to come in and you can, you know, we can set up like debates. We can set up a nice little debate. Right now, I'm not trying to do one of that. I want to be like real quick. I want to be quick. But if we can get a few of you guys on and then just see what you guys are actually say in and then we can set it up in the for the future, like a future show, and we can get the debates flowing. But I will go through some of your comments real quickly whilst we're waiting for people to come through. Um, yeah, drop a comment as well. Drop a comment, drop a comment um, with inside of the live chat. Let me just quickly see what everybody actually is saying. Oh, man, Lara San, Shakur says we need to talk. Okay, okay. Uh, let me quickly see. What are some of these comments going on um, on past videos? Just to see. Um, okay, brought this up. Seeing for a few years, reach out to the main DAO guys to debate them would be a great way to decipher what is what. No, okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So, Mala Abdi Hadi Aiden says, uh, the YouTube, this is for Muhammad's vision of the Lord Ramadan series. Uh, I was surprised to see you are still on the same path of having not seen you for a few years now. Reach out to the main DAO guys to debate. What would be what? Okay. I think honestly, I don't think this is my response actually. I, mean, I don't think the Dawa team would be equipped as of yet to delve into the sources to put up a good debate, even though it's the fundamental story of how Islam came about. Okay. Adnan Rashid is a historian. Abdi Rashid. So Abdi again says, Adnan Rashid is a historian. No, I've heard of, I have not heard of this narrative before. So it would be good to hear a different POV. Honestly, it's a better look for you to debate or converse with the opposition rather than speaking in an echo chamber, man. Okay, cool. Let me just make sure that the volume is good. I think the volume was way too high there. Let me just double check. Let me come back and see what you guys are saying. All right. Um, loud and clear. All right, perfect. Cool, cool, cool. Let me actually drop. I just realized I'm saying for you guys to actually come in. Right, and I haven't even dropped the link. So let me just drop the link to you guys so you guys can come in. All right. We're gonna just arrange for some debates in the future, but you know, you guys could just test the waters, see what you guys are saying. Um, so if you've got any debate topics that you lo- would like to debate, come in, just just drop it, let us know what you would like to debate, and then we'll set it up. Also, if you've got any questions um to myself, you know, drop some questions. If you've got questions to, you know, let's say Muslims or Christians or the Jews or Kemets or whoever else or atheists, they're like, let us know, like drop them in, and then we'll get the relevant people onto the show to do something, right? That's what we're gonna do. Okay, so back to that. Um, I'm just reading through the comments from like previous shows, and I was really clocking it, like I was clocking it, I was going through. The amount of reading, yeah, I do just to put forward like one show on certain topics. And I really preed it. I said to myself, yeah, like a lot of people was like, oh, God, why don't you go Speaker's Corner to debate this? And I'm like, like humbly speaking, humbly, but not humbly, just pure ego, but humble at the same time, right? Do you? know how many books articles journals that i read to present just like a half an hour 
episode of a show and then we just ramble on for the extra, extra hour and a half. Like, do you understand the amount of reading, the amount of work, the amount of research, the amount of money that goes into like just having that information? And then you want me to go to Speaker's Corner to debate people that have hardly even read the Quran. Like, I think to myself, like, I don't... I don't even think you understand the amount of intelligence that I have. I think you underestimate it. And then you overestimate the amount of intelligence that a lot of these Muslim Dawah guys actually have. Because just to do like, again, like little simple shows, we go through all of the Sahih connect, uh, collection. So that's, C Sahih, that's six of the Sahih collection, plus seven, plus eight. So, okay, let's go through that. So we go through your Bukhari, your Muslim, your Ab Sunni Abu Dawood, um, your Tamidi, your, you know, uh, I can't remember the rest right now. I'm just going through them. Then we still go through the Malik of Muwa, the Muwata of Malik. Then we still got Abu Hanifa's Athar. Then we're going through the Syria literature, right? Ibn, Ibn, uh, Ibn al Shamma. I don't want to say Ibn al Shamma, I'm going to say Ibn al Sa'd, right? You'll understand later on. We've got Ibn al Sham. Then we've got Ibn Sa'd. Then you've got things like Tabari. No, before, even before that, you have Marma's uh, Maghazi. Then you have uh, Abdul Rasak's uh, Musanif. Then you have, um, let me keep on flowing, keep on flowing. Then you've got Tabari's Tarikh that has like 39 different volumes, right? What else do we have? Yeah, I can even keep on going more than that. Then we've got like other little stuff, like all of this surreal literature, I'll just put it out there, that's in English. All the stuff that's in English, that's to do with Arabic. Um, Islam, like we read all of that. We have to read through these things here yeah, to make sure that we're saying the right things. Then we go into like, what are the academics actually saying? I was actually going through it, actually. I was making a list of, of it. I was like, right, oh, okay. So I had to read a bag of meat, a study on off an early hadith, early hadith by MJ Kista. Then I had to read Muhammad's Vision by Richard Bell, Muhammad's Call by Richard Bell again, Tahanuf by MJ Kista, Informants of Muhammad by Claude Gilliot, The Creed of Abu Amr by Moshe Jill, The Visions and Ascensions, Surah al Najam by Joseph Van Hess, The Quran and Orientals by Muhammad Mohar Ali, The Biography of Muhammad, Nature and Authenticity by Gregor Sh uh, Sh Shuelo, Ma Method and Theory in the Study of Islamic Origins. Herbert Berg. I can carry on going, 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 going. Ikra, Bismi Rabbika by Uri um, Rubin. Hanafiya and the Kaaba by Uri. Like, I could keep on going, 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 yeah? And I think to myself, like, the amount of research and money you have to pay just to even have some of these articles and journals and books, yeah? Most of my Muslim, um, you know, counterparts and Christian counterparts, yeah, in this field, yeah, they could never keep up. I listen to like your David Woods and your, you know, your APs and your um, uh, Christian Prince and so forth, yeah, and I'm like, oh, it's not even it, fam. It's not even. Then obviously you got the Dawa guys. I'm like, oh, for flip's sake, mate, like. The Dawa guys, especially the Dawa guys, like there's no even no point, my guy. There's no point even having tried to have these discussions. The only people I can really have discussions with, yeah, is the is people in academia because they understand what's going on here. And I think to myself, nah, fam, like you, mm, you didn't mm. to go speakers' corner to debate certain things that I say, yeah, it's a waste of time. Personally, that's what I think personally, yeah. Let me just quickly bring people on who are coming on in. And it's like, ha, huh, you're saying to have conversations with these people. Listen, I will say anybody's welcome to come on in, you know, and have a conversation on stuff that I actually um, bring up. But to say you want to debate me on these things, yeah, you have a whole lot of reading to do, yeah, to, before you even try to debate. You know, anyway, it's there. There's a whole lot of reading that one has to take place here before you debate on anything that I say so far on the whole Ramadan series or any of my, my, my videos I've done. And I don't personally think that anybody's really up to that as of yet, to be honest with you. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it real. I'll be I'll be really real. So I'm just reading comments, right? I'm just waiting for you guys if you guys want to come on in. Um, but I'm just reading comments. I, I might present something later, but I don't know. Um okay, no, I see. I'm looking at comments here and I'm trying to find the most intelligent comments here, and I really can't. Um 
Okay. Yeah, no, I can't. I can't even. I can't even. I can't even. Okay. Okay. All right. Peace, brother. Callum. I'd like to know about them taking Mohammed, uh, peace be upon him, to Ethiopia as a child. Hmm. Okay. Okay. That could be a good title, actually. I'd like to know about them taking Mohammed to Ethiopia as a child. Ooh. Let me actually think about that. Let me just think about that. <sighs> Muhammad was Muhammad kidnapped as a child. Whoo! Whoo! Hey, let me know, family. Let me know. Would that be a banger of a show? Was Muhammad kidnapped as a child? Mm. Was Muhammad kidnapped to Ethiopia? Hmm. Did they steal Muhammad? I'm trying to think. That could be a good show. I'm trying to think of a nice catchy title for the algorithm. It could be a good show. It could be a good show. Um, if you want, I, I can do a show on that. I, I, I may do a show on that still. What's good? Man like Saif Al-Islam. What's good? Get again, yeah? The link is here, all right? The link is here because I am not here for a long time. What I'm simply doing is seeing what you guys are saying. Um, I would love for some Muslims and Christians and whoever else you may be, if you lot would like to debate, yeah, choose a topic. I will set up a debate uh, for some time in the future. But what we can do right now is just, you know, have a little conversation about that particular topic you like to, you know, debate or have a question on. And then we'll, you know, we'll just see how it goes and then we'll set up for, for the future. But yeah, the link is there if you guys would like to come in. If not, you know, Oh, well. Oh, well. What are you guys say? Um, uh, no Muslims coming here, fam. Are oh, they breaking fast? Bro, fast is broken long time. Yeah, fast is broken long time. If I'm not mistaken, you know. We've eaten, fam. We've eaten right now. Let me just make sure that I'm, I'm not chatting rubbish. Um, people have eaten. Right? Time to just eat. Like, oh, there. Like, time table. Let's quickly see. It's a timetable saying uh, Maghrib today is uh, Monday, 11 7 54. Yeah, man, bro, you lot bro, fast. Good off now, bro, man. Let's go, let's go. It's, it's, it's all pushing ish right now, fam. It's pushing ish right now. Let's get it. <laughs> uh, well, love and respect, brother. What's good? Uh, your content is fire. Wasn't Bilal born of an Ethiopian queen born into servitude? I don't know. I don't know. Um, they do put forward it's a queen. I can't tell you if it is or it isn't. Um, I will tell you that most of most Arabs, most people that we're calling Arabs are misnomers. It's, it's misnomer. Most of them are coming from. And that's why I would like to call the early expansion. Of what people call of Islam is really the early expansion of an Ethio Arab. It's an Ethio Arab revolution or expansion, meaning most of the people there are actually a mixture of Ethiopians and Arabs. Like the Quarish, most of them are are a group of either straight Ethiopians or an Ethiopian Arab ad admixture. Right, that's really what it is, um, and. We could do a show on that. We could do a show on that as well, you know. We can do a show on that. I'm not brought these records are ready and just showing, you know, who has an Ethiopian mother here and and so forth. Like, but you know, like Omar, Omar has an Ethiopian mother or grandmother or something like that. I've, I've done all of that shows already. Like, you have to jump into to those type of records there. Um, Arab is not a race. It's not. It's not a nationality. That's true. That's so true. I have so many questions to continue with my fast. I have so many questions to continue with my fast. Okay, Callum, bro, uh, you married? I got to put you on to someone. Easy, easy, technically. You know what is there? Technically, man is married, you know, but at the same time, <laughs> I don't mind having up to four wives, you know? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm playing. I'm playing. But yeah, um, yeah, okay, Tamari Al Habashi. Okay, let me see, because you're the one who dropped the question about Ethiopia, and um, all right, we'll have to go into um, yo, peace. What's good? I am a god, 1982. What's good? All right, again, the link is there in it, um, but I'm gonna do a show, 
that is was Muhammad kidnapped as a child I'm gonna see where would I go for that let me see um should I go to Ibn Asak I'll go to Ibn Asak real quickly um there's other records but I'll go to Ibn Asak uh let's see I shall do this today we could do this live on air ish um and we'll have this conversation this could be a nice little conversation um share screen share screen window and then afterwards we you know i'm waiting for you guys we can we can go into something all right let's see even a sock where do we want to go to do, 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 do. uh where would this be what's her name again what was his um wet nurse called again halima 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 there we go halima let's try this let's try this let's see h a l i m a come on baby come on baby let's see if we can find it there we go mm -hmm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. these are the children of Halima. okay cool um okay cool uh-huh oh -ho. okay cool let's see boom um okay we can go here and then let's see if we can go into what other surreal literature do we have um what would be a good one what a good surreal literature uh ibn kathir ibn kathir okay ibn kathir we might go to ibn kathir afterwards so let's do it like this okay um uh okay okay cool 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 all right so we listen to these these two stories that's obviously related and then we'll ask the question so i'm not even going to propose it like that i'm going to ask the question first and foremost all right so i don't know if you can see the screen i'm reading from can i highlight can i highlight okay it's not allowing me to highlight for some reason okay it says here the apostle of god used to say there is no prophet but has shepherd a flock shepherded a flock sorry when they said you too apostle of god he said yes nam the apostle of god used to say to his companions i am the most arab of you all cheese that boasts right there yet now i love it i love it i am the most arab of you all Ooh, i love it when a man boasts you know if anybody don't know, yeah, I'm a Leo, innit? So it's in my it's in my genetic makeup to be a bragger and a boaster. Okay. I am of Quarish and I was suckled among the Bani Sa'ad ibn Bakr. It is alleged by some, but God knows the truth. Okay. So this is an allegation or an, uh, 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 yes, an allegation, you know, but even Ibn Asak is questioning it, so to speak. That when his foster mother brought him to Mecca, he escaped her among the crowd while she was taking him to his people. She brought, she sought him and could not find him. So she went to Abdul Muttalib and said, I brought Muhammad tonight. Okay, let's go up. And when I was in the upper part of Mecca, he escaped me and I do not know where he is. Yeah, hold that thought. Hold that thought. Okay, because we're going to find out something, yeah, that it's a bit hidden, yeah, it's a bit hidden, and you have to do detective work. So I love doing detective work, okay? So we find that she's now bringing Muhammad back to Mecca, to Abdul Muttalib, but now he's gone missing. This child has gone missing, said that he escaped her among the crowd while she was taking him to his people, okay? But he's missing. All right, cool. Let's continue. So Abdul Muttalib went to the Kaaba, praying to God to restore him. Ya Allah, please restore Muhammad back to me. He's missing. He's gone. Like, where the hell is he? All right? They assert. Okay? They assert. Let's read it. Let's keep on reading. Now. Ooh. Anyways, let me stop. All right, cool. So yeah, we're roughly here. I don't know if you can see my screen still. They say, they assert that Warqa ibn Naful ibn Asad and another man of Quraysh found him and brought him to Abdul Muttalib. Okay, let me hold down there. So, let's just check it now. Let's just check it. Remember, um, I've done previous shows on this, yeah? And we're talking about Waraka. Waraka was an Ethiopian minister, 
Okay, he used to go, uh, you know, he was a minister to the Abyssinian um, Najashi. He would go there and they'll have conversations and see report back on, on how the country is doing and anything going on in Mecca and so forth, right? He was an Ethiopian uh, minister, okay? I just want to put it out there. And this second man that they're keeping hidden, right? They're keeping hidden. Yeah, most times when you hear Waraka mentioned, you also hear Zaid ibn Amr being mentioned. But also remember, Waraka is the one now, yeah? So from a very young age, Waraka has a dealing, yeah, with Muhammad from a very young age. Let's continue. Let's just quickly continue anyway. Okay, so he found him and brought him to Abdul Muhammad, um, Matalib, sorry, saying, we have found this son of yours in the upper part of Mecca. Abdul Matalib took him and put him on his shoulder <clears throat> as he went around the Kaaba, confiding in him, to God's protection and praying for him, then he sent him to his mother, Amina. Okay, so that's one story. We're going to hear the second story, and then we're going to do some detective work. Yeah? Let's get some detective work going on. All right? So this 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 is where this title... You have to find... Guys, in the comment section, yeah? Give me a good title. Okay? So, uh, so far, I've got... Was Muhammad kidnapped as a child and we're going to get into the kidnapping but pit bit right now we're going to ask to ask this question check it now a learned person okay a learned person told me that when that what urged his foster mother to return him to his mother apart from what she told his mother was that a number of abyssinian christians saw him with her and when she brought him back after he had been after he had been weaned they looked at him asked questions about him and studied him carefully, then they said to her, let us take this boy and bring him to our king and our country, for he will have a great future. We know all about him. The person who told me this alleged that she could hardly get him away from them. My question is, my question is, yeah, did she, did they, it, they could hardly get him away from them. Did they, being men, take this child away from her? Hence, he's gone missing. I don't know what has happened here. Where is he? Okay. Are we, is it a possibility? This is, I'm just going to throw it out. We're just doing detective work. This, is, this could be speculation for all I know. But it seems quite likely that a person, these Ethiopian fellows, could have quite possibly taken him away. Is this when he went missing? Question. Was he returned by Waraka, the Najashi's Ethiopian minister, yeah, back to Abdul Muttalib at this point? Is this what the story is trying to tell us? That's my question. I'm going to, I'm going to throw out there. I'm going to throw out there. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? We'll do that. What do you guys actually think on that? Okay. Talk to me. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He said the black shea. Uh, that's my guy. That's my guy. Um, why don't you call Raza and that anymore? Uh, listen, listen, Raza. Yeah. That's my brother right there. You know, that guy. Is my absolute brother. Okay. Truth be told, I haven't called a lot of people back onto the show. I haven't called, I'm, I'm, I'm here for them. I'm easy, you know. It's not even like I, I lose love or anything. It's just that I'm not in that space. Like, I'm not going to speaker's corner. They're not at speaker's corner. Like, we're not, you know, you know, sometimes when your life just diverges a little bit. But the more and more I, you know, I, I get back into the flow, then the more and more I'm going to get my peoples on, you know. That's how it goes. Right now, it's just, you know, we're just chilling with vibes in. Let me get back to it. Okay. I heard Raza the Shia is Sunni now, Farid said. I highly doubt it. Do you know what? I, if I was a betting man, I would put, you know, £100. I would even put more than that. I think I would even bet more than that. That Raza is not a, a Sunni. It's impossible. It's an impossible can't. It's a betrayal of your whole bloodline lineage heritage everything so i very much so doubt that okay in fact in fact i haven't even spoken to raza um you know about this yeah in fact let me think of something of more value 
in fact, anything of more value, I put a thousand pounds on it. Okay, that there's, there's, it's, it's an impossibility. It's an impossibility. From knowing the conviction that Raza and the family has, it's an impossibility. I, I just can't see it. Okay, can't see it. Can't see it at all. That's like that's like I don't know. Let me think. That's like somebody saying to me, yeah, that Shamsi, yeah, has now converted to Shiaism. I haven't spoken to Shamsi in like good years, like three years. But I I could put a thousand pound down that she, that Shamsi has not converted to Shiaism. That doesn't seem right to me. He is the most Salafi. He is super Salafi. There's no way. <laughs> There's no way. If you said a, a now reduced form of Salafism, you know, I don't even know what a reduced form of Salafism is. I could be like, okay, I can see it, possibly. Yeah, possibly. But to say he converted to Shiaism, there's hell no. It's the same way I would say hell no that um, Raza is converted to Sunnism. I mean, yeah, Sunnism. It doesn't make no sense. Oh, man. Jeez. Titans TV's back, baby. Let's get it. All right, let me see. Salam. As let me just do this. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Oh, let me just quickly take that off before before I get into trouble. <laughs> I think the Chinese Syria had something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, this is how I know. Yeah, you're on this. You're on this. You're on this. Um, boom, boom, boom. Muhammad Aisha. Um, Callum, are you Muslim? Um, no, 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 no. Um. No, no. For some, actually, for some people who don't know, yeah, I'm, I just want to just drop this. I come from a tradition, yeah. It's really a comedic tradition, to be honest with you. But from that tradition itself, yeah, we actually accept Muhammad as a messenger and a prophet. It's going to sound mad, isn't it? So, Callum, you're not Muslim, but you accept Muhammad as a messenger and prophet. Yeah, you know, that's kind of mad, right? I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I accept it. I accept it. I accept it. From our tradition, we accept it. We accept it. We 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 accept that a lot of um a lot of comedic in terms of comedic, our philosophy, our teachings, our Ooh, how can I put it? Our fraternal. How can I put it? Our traditions was survived via a lot of like went through Christianity and Islam, and a lot of our stuff is like safeguarded and saved in there. If I remember my teachings correctly, that is the whole tradition of where our um, fraternity or our philosophy comes from, and it tells us it passed through these people and they were. How can I put it? Um, heirs of our knowledge and information and, and gatekeepers. So yeah, like we accept we accept Muhammad as being a prophet and a messenger and so forth. But we also understand, based upon our philosophy, that if he truly was an heir of our knowledge, right? What we see of Islam today could not be a byproduct of what he received so yeah it's an imposter can't so we so we can understand so that's why even me I, i'm a bit interested in islam on, on a sly um even with christianity and judaism like all of that we, we we accept a lot of these major figures as being people that possessed our knowledge so even now like when i look at islam i look at it i'm like okay so let me look at this thing critically let me look at this thing critically. Let me not accept what Muslims say, and let me not accept this, what Christianity Christians say of of this. Let's actually read it, and you're like, oh, okay, all right, cool, cool. I see it, I see it, I see it, I see it, I see it. But anyways, that's 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 me digressing. Let me not stop digressing. We, we'll, we'll go into that and later on. Okay, no, Chayan, Shamsi being Shia is more likely than Rasa becoming Sunni. <laughs> Does he speak Arabic? Um, you know, back in the day, yeah, back in the day. I could hold a good conversation in Arabic, you know. Back in the day, I could actually read Arabic quite well. To be honest with you, my Arabic was quite quite all right. But we're going back over 10 years now. We're going back a good 15, 
a good, yeah, a good, I would say a good 15 to 10, 10 to 15 years, my Arabic was all right, you know, truth be told. Even before 10 years, yeah, my Arabic, 12 to 15 years ago, my Arabic was all right. Nowadays, whoo, you know what you say? If you don't use it, you lose it. Them ones, them ones right there. I'm, I'm even scared to see how my, um, my hieroglyphs are right now. Uh, yeah, Takia is our thing. Please witness this Sunni saying to this Shia, Takia is your thing, Alam. Could you complete, could you please commit that to me? <laughs> okay, this is going to be relevant in the next coming days. Dr. Sunni, don't try claim Takia back later, yeah? <laughs> Uh, what's good? What's good? What's good? Let me just quickly see. Um, uh, Fari response said it, not me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. Um, okay, I struggle with right and possess slaves. What do you think of those verses? Um, I used to love, you know what? Yeah, can I tell you something secretly? I used to love that verse back in the day. I hope nobody who, who's close to me is listening in, yeah. I'm just saying, innit? Yeah, back in the day, I used to love those verses. Because I used to love that back in the day. I hope nobody... Hey, you have to mute your mic, my guy. Yeah, or mute the YouTube. Okay. I was like, listen, yeah. I was such a good guy, yeah. I was always contemplating, yeah. How can I get some females, yeah, without... How can I get females, yeah, without having to, like, really commit and marry them, innit? The only way it's there, like, I was such a deviant as a youth growing up, innit? Because these were my, like, my hujah, my proof text. Like, how can I use this to be such a deviant that my soul really requires me to be? Stark for Allah. And I used to think to myself, hold on. Whatever my right hand possesses, yeah? <laughs> hey! So you say that I can have concubines, yeah. I don't actually have to, like, commit and marry Cause you know, like man's got like, uh, uh, but you know the way there, like, uh, 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 like what, what are you saying, fam? What, 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 what? Did I realize, yeah? If you wanna make it in this world, yeah, you wanna be a deviant, yeah. Just make sure you have money. I had money, I had money, and when the money was there, I could be like, listen, yeah, boom, boom, boom. This is a verbal contract, yeah. Man's not trying to wife you, but man likes you. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's okay, yeah? All right, cool. It's not haram. It's not fornication because it's whatever my right hand possesses, yeah? All right, cool. Say less. And that was good to roll back in the day. That's how much of a deviant I was, yeah? Sugar, should I should have said this live on air. I don't know, you know. Now I might have to come back and bite me. Um, Yeah, family tree, if you'd like to come in, come on 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 in. Come on in. Um, Do you believe the Quran is from God? Hmm, good question. I would say whoever writ the Quran, and let's just say hypothetically, no, let's take the assumption that Muhammad was the one responsible for everything that is in the Quran. Okay, let's go off that assumption. And let's not say written because we don't have no proof that Muhammad writ it so to speak. And then there is the traditional claim that he recited these things. Okay. So do I think what was recited by Muhammad came from God? Let me just, let me just have that up. Do you, okay. Do you believe the Quran is from God? Okay. I would say that I personally believe, I hate the word believe, but as far as I can tell, based upon the literature, okay, the person who was delivering this Quran, it seems, and this is very difficult to prove, right, seems to believe he was receiving inspiration and visions from a being, a deity, a being, a divine, he definitely believed it was being inspired to him from a divine source. Yes. So I believe that the Quran's author believed it was coming from God. Okay? But I also hold that this is all the produce of man slash men. Okay? 
So even though you believe it's been inspired from God, it is still a man that is delivering this. Okay. All right. Does that make sense? What we can prove is that, or not, we can't even prove this really, but what we definitely do know, it was a man that produced this who claimed he was being inspired by God. And that is my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay. Only Sosa. Come on. We're getting into something, baby. We're getting into something. Again, we're allowing, there's a link there, so you guys can come in, okay? Come in, come true, come true. I'm not trying to be here all night. Okay, I think I'm ignoring my cue on the slide because it would destroy the topic. Um, no, I'm reading your comments here, though. So you might have to just repost it, my guy. Yeah, repost it. Okay, the Quran still has to read, read out the etymology of Gariz and Hebrew and not the falsified fell from Sky Arabic. Okay, let's get Lee Solo on here. Lee Solo, talk to me. Yeah, what's up, brother? How you doing? Good, I'm good. Great. So you are a Muslim, correct? Or no? Hello? Brother, can you hear me? Apologies. This it just kicked me out. Can you imagine? My own show, it kicked me out. Go ahead. Say that again. <laughs> no, it's all good. I was just asking you, so are you a Muslim? I'm sorry, I just jumped in the mix. So oh, I thought I answer this question. No, no, I'm not a Muslim. Okay, great. Um, and again, I've actually spoken to you before about religions in general and, and i really don't want to offend anybody in the you know live right now but i mean all you gotta do is study history and then you'll realize that islam was created you know around the 17th century when the prophet muhammad supposedly walked this earth now honestly i don't believe he ever existed mm -hmm. and again i don't mean to offend anybody i know y'all are talking about ramadan and everything but like Whenever I hear Islam, it, it makes me cringe, especially being an African myself, because the way I view it, you know, Islam was really used to conquer a lot of areas in Africa, mainly up north. You know, the Arabs came in. And again, that's their culture. That's their beliefs. I don't got no problem with any Arab, but I just cannot respect the religion of Islam because the way it was used to conquer many African nations. It replaced many of our traditional ancestral culture that we had. Christianity as well. Both of them are in the same boat to me. So anytime I just hear people talking about religion, especially African people, black people, it really hurts me because that's none of our culture. You know, we had our cultures, our ancestors had everything figured out thousands of years ago until these invaders brought their own beliefs upon us and made us forget a lot, you know, that we were taught so anytime I hear Muslims or Christians, you know, speaking, I was raised a Christian, like my whole family is Christian on both sides. But the more I studied history, I realized that none of it was real because no prophets has, have ever came from the skies to validate one religion over the other. So I just kind of wanted to jump in here and say that again, I don't mean to offend anybody. If you are a Muslim, then I just encourage people to really understand the historical side before they look into the stories and, you know, the morality part. Just look into how these religions were created and how they were, you know, pushed upon people. And then you'll realize that they weren't, or at least not for African people, they weren't meant for us. That's other people's culture. So I just wanted to get your opinion on that. You know, I love, appreciate talking to you. The conscious community has woken me up to levels that, that's, you know, that like that that school could never that no church would ever be able to like teach you these things so i'm just really appreciative of you and your channel and the conscious community because i've been able to learn so much and i appreciate you brother keep doing what you're doing i'm gonna keep supporting and i'm gonna listen to you off air talk let's to you later get it. let's get it my bro yeah you know what yeah i feel you you know i absolutely feel you because for a long time it took me a long time to actually like come out of that way of thinking as well because i was always a person who was like it's some bonfire i'm ready to bonfire on all of it yeah like even now even now yeah i still have post-traumatic religious syndrome yeah because i realized yeah what these in my way of thinking, what these religions did. So if anybody asks me, like, like oh, it's mad, it's mad. So there's certain institutions, like, so let's just say, like, Christianity with institutions, like, it gives me the ick to, to, it used to give me the ick to participate, go in, 
or be around that. The reason being is Christianity, in my mind, was the cause, was the tool, the cause and the tool that was used to enslave West Africans and bring them over into the Americas, Caribbeans, etc. And I was like, hell no. No, 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 no. There's nothing you can tell me what, what, what? A blonde hair, blue eyed God. Hey, listen, listen. Start. I started. I started playing some sizzler. Listen. Tell him I have no white God. Don't teach me anything wrong. Can no white God save me from white man oppression? Come on. Listen. I was on that. You know that conscious tip. Yeah. Listen. It touched my soul. Same thing with Islam. It's like what? Well, you're telling me about Islam, the same religion that enslaved castrated mutilated murdered and killed death that's did i forget saying raped yeah east africans north Africans, central africans west africans even are you telling me that you want me to be jelly jelly with these types of individuals and go to the institutions and red tear 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 like it just acts me i was like for hell no listen yeah even all of it i was i was so anti all of it like speaking arabic like get out of here man even the english language even pissed me off at times you know because like really and truly you wouldn't be speaking this language if you wasn't i.e either colonized or enslaved by you know the british or the europeans i was i was all anti all of it then i realized uh, okay it's not actually the religion's fault it's not actually the literature's fault. It's not actually Jesus or Muhammad's fault all of this took place. What has happened is people, human beings, are fahahat up. And these fahahat up individuals took something such as, you know, whatever the, a book says or religion says, created an institution in order to enslave and and how can I put it, authorized the enslavement and even combated the cognitive dissonance that human beings had in enslaving other human beings. They had to now strip away a human's humanity in order to do all these things. And I said, okay. So my real gripe, yeah, truth be told, is not with Muhammad, it's not with Jesus, it's not with the literature that these individuals inspired or put together, i.e. the Quran and the Bible and so forth, right? It's not even all of those things. What is my actual gripe? It's actually the people that created the mentality for other people to enslave, murder, torture, castrate, and so forth, these other individuals. It's just a tool. They utilize religion as their vessel to do these things. So they basically co-opted this, the religion or the books or whatever the case is, the name of a God to do these things. But it's not actually the book or the God or the, or the religious founders. It's actually the people behind it that done these things. And I said, okay, so really and truly what I need to be doing is actually, I can't put it, compartmentalizing the God, Allah, the God, Jehovah, the God, Theos, Theos uh, and Allah, Jesus, Muhammad, the literature, the Injil or the gospel, the uh, Quran or the Furqan, whatever you want to call it. We have to just separate that from the people who did these things and utilize these things to do it in the name of these people. All right, cool. I, I had to separate it. I had to separate it. But I feel you. I, I had the same hang up. Like, listen, I'm not even feeling all of that, you know? I'm not feeling it at all. I want to burn fire on all of it. But yeah. Jeez, man. Like Ezra's up in the building. Jeez. Yeah, let's say slavery is wrong. Jeez, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, at the same time, yeah, I even had to think to myself, yeah, this sounds mad now, yeah. Like, I had to think to myself, because when you start reading the text of the slavery, like what happened in slavery, I started thinking twice, like, oh, okay. Okay. Like, a lot of the time we're blaming, you know, let's say the Arabs and the Europeans, yeah, for doing these things. But then um, we completely forget about the Africans that were complicit in doing these things. And I was like, oh, ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. Ooh, okay. Okay. See, that's another conversation to have as well. That's a story for another day. Let's not even go into that. Yeah. So some yeah, you have to separate. You have to separate. You have to separate. Um, so how does this prove Islam isn't true? We're not trying to you know we're not even trying to prove that Islam is not true, right? No, we're not even trying to do that. 
Islam is true to you, Christianity is true to you, the next person and whatever else is true to another person. If we want to go into the facts of the matter, let's get it. Which Allah is 60? I'll give it the one who is Creeks. Ah, shit. Okay, true. But what we have to understand that we are all on a ball floating throughout um, through unlimited space, I think. Okay. Arabian princess. Cheese. Oh, my days. See? 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 Like, um, cheese. I want to keep it up there. I'm going to keep it up there. And, and, and I'm going to come back. Yeah. Salute for the donation. I'm loving it. My sister, my queen, my princess, Ethan. Let's get it. And, uh, oh, mate. Mate, you want me to read this in Arabic? Oh my days. I will I will massacre this. I will massacre this. She's saying read it in Arabic. Listen, can my Arabic people come on? Because I'm telling you now, yeah, it's been a long time since I read Arabic. And for me to come on to read Arabic, yeah, again, yeah, without the vowels, yeah. This is like Egyptian Arabic. I remember I was in Egypt, yeah, and then they had the newspapers, and I'm like. Okay, I can read normal Arabic here, yeah? but now you want me to read this Arabic here yeah, without no fataha, no dhammar, no kasra, nothing like that. Yeah, like, I'm like, listen, you lot are killing me. You lot are actually killing me. Like right now, Lana, Lana has the uh, he, uh, mashi. See, 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 see. I'm falling at the first, the first bit, mate. I don't even know how to read this again. I can't read it. I'll be really good with you. Give me like a few days reading Arabic, yeah, and I'll get into it. Give me a few days. Give me a few days. But I'll keep it up there, so it's in my subconscious. Yeah, I should really. You know what I should do? Should I do this for this for this Ramadan? Relearn Arabic. Yeah. So the next time, yeah, my Arabian princess comes on you yeah, and donates you, yeah, I'll be like, all right, cool, sis, say nothing. Do you know what I'm going to do? You don't even have to put up the, the vowels. I'll just read it just like that, and I'll tell you exactly what it says. I'll do that. Hey, how does that sound? <laughs> Peace and love, anyway. All right, um, can you do a show on Greeks? As I've read, they had a lot of Ethiopians, and their stories talk about marrying Ethiopians, science TV. Um, can you do a show on Greeks? Oh, ooh, now you're right up my alley. Okay. Give me a time period, though. Give me a time period, because that's to say Greeks. Yeah, that's that's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Um, cool. Okay. Again, family tree. Like, come on in, come on in. Um, if you really want to get my uh, attention, do that. Tag Titans TV, and it makes my life a whole lot easier into um getting to your questions. Okay. Okay. Let's go. But the whole point is for you guys to come on in. Like, I want you guys to come on in. Come on in. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, cool. So, so Karim, I've never understood this notion by Muslims. Allah deceives who he wills. Can you see the problem? Do you know what, yeah? I remember seeing this, right? Where somebody spoke about you know, I think it was Christian Prince um, was hammering home about Allah being um, the best of deceivers or the best of plot. Yeah, something like to deceive and so forth, right? And then I always think to myself, like, I hear it. I hear you guys, right? And I know it sounds like mad, right? Let me just put it. I never understood this notion by Muslims. Allah deceives who he wills. Can you see the problem? Okay. Um, I see the I see it. I see what you mean. I definitely do see what you mean right there. But then also at the same time, what is trying to be said is that Allah guides, let's just say Allah guides who he wills. Okay. No, say a person is guided and somebody is misguided. But both guidance and misguidance comes from Allah. Right? Both guidance and misguidance comes from Allah or God. Let's put it like that. Guidance and this and misguidance comes from God. So somebody being deceived also and somebody being um unceived, <laughs> deceived, and sieved. <laughs> you know, you got a sieve, <laughs> sieve. Yeah. So you got that. It all comes from God. That's what that's to me is what is trying to be said. But it's a bit like oh, that sounds a bit mad at the same time, yeah. 
And then, you know what I did? I read a verse within inside of the inside of the Bible, and I'm saying, if you are if you're a person from a biblical standpoint, you do realize that God also of the of the Bible also deceives people as well, which sounds mad. Sounds mad. And I'll give you a case in point. I believe it was Kings or Ezekiel. Okay, Kings or Ezekiel. I'll, I'll let I'll find it for you. No, let me find it. Let me do this. Let me do this. I'll actually find it. Um, do, 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 do. Meanwhile, can I yeah, yeah. tell you my opinion about that? Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So the verse is saying, like literally, um, that Allah is the one who is um, taking people on the righteous path and he is the, also the one who is deceiving people, meaning that they have no control what they are doing. He's the creator of everything. Meaning that those people who are wrong according to the religion, it is Allah who is deceiving them and not leading them to the righteous path. This is my understanding of it. And my following question will be, if he is the one, if he is the controller of everything, what is happening, why he is then the judge when everything is according to his will? Yeah. Jeez. Oh, what a resisting. What's this guy's name? Michai? Michai? I think Michai. Oh, you lot speak, speak, speak. I'm just trying to find something actually so I can make the point. Uh, I, I already made my point. I don't know if you heard it. Yeah, but... I, heard, I, heard, I heard, I heard. But you lot speak between yourselves. There's more people here. But I'm just trying to find something right now. Right. Um, so let's see because I'm not watching the YouTube. Wait. Who is else? So, is there another opinion? So, this is my opinion. When I'm reading it, and of course, I'm not a Muslim. When I'm reading this verse, I'm understanding it that Allah is the source of the people who are not following the, His way and who are following this way. Which makes me kind of thinking about the stuff that there will be a kind of a judgment day and He would then judge what people have done, right? But because he is the source who decides uh, about people who are doing fo to follow his way, and he's also the, the one who is pushing people towards the other way, how can he judge them? That will be my question. Okay. All right, before we go into that, I wanted to just quickly do this, right? Because there is that conversation about, you know, deception and so forth, right? And I, I always thought, like, oh, this, is a, this is a good point. Like, this is a good point because we don't even realize that Yahweh himself also deceives. So let me just quickly go into that, yeah, because, you know, we always hear it from the, the Christian uh, polemicist side. Okay, let me quickly do this. And he said, he heard thou, therefore, the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of the heaven, heavens standing by him on his right and on his left and the lord said who shall persuade ahab that he may go up and fall at ramoth gilead allow me and one said on this manner and another said on that manner and there came forth a spirit and stood before the lord and said i will persuade him and the lord said unto him wherewith and he said i will go forth and i will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets and he said thou shalt persuade him and prevail also go forth and do so now therefore behold the lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets and the lord hath spoken evil concerning thee wowzers yeah i wanted to read that out because sometime when we're two on the um you know, the the anti-anti-Islam side, yeah, for God being a deceiver, right? We also see that Yahweh, or the Christian slash Judaic God, is also a god of deception. He's now put a lying spirit in the mouth of prophets. 
I will agree with that, but um, so there's no question about that. Um, but the question was about the Muslim scripture. So if you read just now, I understand why you read that, right? I'm with you on that. No objections to that. <laughs> You're right. And that's the funny stuff. No matter which Abrahamic scripture you read, it will show you that the God is the source of good and evil. Mm. And then you have to ask yourself why he is judging people at all. Right? What is the kind of sense behind it? If he is the source of everything, right? How can he judge people because of his own actions? Yeah, that's my question. How can God judge others based upon the source of his actions, did you say? Let me just make sure I got that correct. Yes. So, in fact, he is the reason why people are doing stuff. For sure. There, there is no free will because he is the one who is doing that. For sure. It's like, right? There is no free will. Even if it says, I give you free will. But the verses are saying, I'm the one who is deceiving you. And I'm the one who is leading the right path. And you read the, the verses from the Torah what, or the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And we know the verses of, of the Muslim scripture, right? Mm -hmm. How then he can do the judgment? Because in fact... He is just playing with us. He was the one who decided what everybody has to do or not do. Jeez. I can answer that for you if you want. Let's get it on, Kalam. You good? Yeah, yeah. Kofi, well, let me just clearly say this. Kofi says, the judgment is a kangaroo court. Lord God, I need my Christians to jump on in and even my Muslims to come on in. Talk to us, kings. Talk to us. Let's get it. Go ahead. Once you start saying that God, I don't know who was speaking earlier, but once you start saying that God judges you because he judges good and he judges evil, then that can't be God. God is only associated with the good. God is not associated with evil. So you would never hear any Christian or any Muslim saying Allah or Jehovah is evil, even though the book states that he does evil. Do you understand that? So mm -hmm. if, God is, if God is associated with good, he cannot be associated with evil. So anyone that speaks to you about a God who does evil and does good, that can't be God. That's the Prince of Darkness. Oh. Jeez. Uh, could, could, uh, oh, I, I, I will differ. Uh, I'm an atheist, but I know some stuff about Judaism, right? And they are a little bit different in that. Because they would say... God is the source of everything, right? So there is nothing happening in this world without him controlling it. So the God also is the control of the evil. The so-called devil which only exists in Christianity and Islam, there is so, such a role in Judaism too, but he is just doing the stuff what God wants him to. Mm -hmm. Right? So right. if this God will be not controlling what this quote unquote person will do, then he cannot be a God because then he's not the controller of every atom in this universe. Mm -hmm. You know, facts. facts, facts, facts. Let me quickly do this quickly. Um, Kofi Brooks says, oh, Why is it not working? Deception is evil. And then we read already. What does it say here? Let's quickly get it. Uh, and the Lord have spoken evil concerning thee. Jeez, God not only does evil, He speaks evil into existence. This is uh, Yahweh or uh, Jehovah of the Old Testament, of the Bible. Let's get it. Let me just quickly get some, like, varied, um, you know, talks going on. Family tree, yet again, yeah? 
I'm not trying to be here for long. I want you guys to come on and have discussions and debates and so forth, right? So come on in. If you're free, yeah, the link has been shared. Don't tell me that you don't see the link, yeah, because it's been shared. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Uh, let me read a few more. Of, uh, okay. Big up, Aki. I need an answer, fam. As an ex-Muslim, when I hear some of us say Muhammad was a black man, then is this the same dude who married Aisha when he was eight? Answer, please, says Sankofa Ashanti. Okay, it's a good one. Okay, let me see if I can answer it. All right. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so Muhammad. Muhammad is been, has been described in various places with inside of the Hadith literature. Okay. Being number one, the son of a black man. That's one. He's been described as being brown skin. That's two. He's also been described as being a mixture of white and red. And then he's been described as being white. Okay. Now, there's various interpretations of all of those things, which I care not to go into detail with. I'm just giving you the broad range of things of how Muhammad has been described. Son of a black man, brown skin, white and red, and white. Okay? Those are the various descriptions of him. Okay? If anybody would like to, like, you know, discuss that, like, what's the final answer? What color was he? That's a story for another day. Okay, then is this the same dude who married Aisha when she was eight? Um, point of clarification, he married Aisha um, according to the traditionalist hadiths at the age of six. Okay, so before eight even, six years of age. And he consummated marriage at nine years of age according to the uh, traditionalist views. Now, mind you, not every Muslim hold on to these hadiths, okay? Those who are part of the traditionalists hold on to these hadiths. So, if we're going to talk about the four major schools of thoughts, okay, uh, of jurisprudence, i.e. the Maliki, they completely reject this hadith. The uh, Hanifi, they completely reject it as well. The uh, Hanbali and onwards, i.e. the traditionalist, they accept this. Shias, I, as I, I don't even think that they would even accept this hadith because it's coming from Aisha, okay? So, I don't believe the Shias even accept this hadith. So, you've got a small group, which is like the loudest and the largest group of um, traditionalists, do believe that Muhammad married a six-year-old and consummated marriage with a nine-year-old. And most of these people is the ones that you will see at Speaker's Corner and speaking loudly online. Okay, according to Authentic Hadith, Muhammad was celebrated for his whiteness. I don't think he was celebrated for his whiteness, but according to Authentic Hadith, Muhammad definitely uh, is depicted as white. Um, Factism says here, in the Bible, they were told that this potter and the... Potter has... Let me just put this up. Uh, more power than the clay, so the fact that you were born a male and female, have a likes and dislikes is not your fault, okay? Cool. Let me go through, let's see. Okay, let's go again. Face Ahmed, you're not ready for Marala Kalam or Sarah Garvey. Woo tag, swordsman! <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, doesn't it say he had white ankles and wrists or something when he was entering a city on a horse? Um... Oh, no, it says the whiteness of his inner leg. But then you can find other hadiths that says the blackness of his upper foot. <laughs> so it's like, I've made a video on this, like what color was Muhammad or something along those lines. And uh, if you take the hadiths to be in literally and not understand it's the usage of the language, you'll think that Muhammad has a, a white foot, sorry, white, one white leg and one uh, black foot. So it's like, is, is Muhammad a zebra? But you have to understand the, the, the context of what they're saying. But I don't want to get lost in that today. 
Okay, no one can claim that their God is all-powerful when things are going good, but when things are going bad, suddenly the weak, enfeeble people are to blame, but the but the one who tower is given much is required. To one whose power is given, much is required. Okay, cool. Uh, listen, brother, the black man will never reach the Jenna, the ones who is sitting on the wrong shoulder, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, that's a good one still. I like that. Um, Tyus TV, if check Quran 18, 107 and 23, 11, you can see word Ferdus, which is the same from ancient Persia. That's right. That's right. Ferdus means paradise in uh, Persian language. That's right. Or originates from the Persian language or one of the two. Yeah, yeah. Cool. This thing keeps kicking me out. Talk to me. What are we saying? What are we saying? Again, join the link because I'm not trying to be here for too long. All right. Tell um, before you go, I want to ask you a question because I've been asking a few people and I haven't been getting a good enough answer. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I, I think you can answer this question tonight. In the Quran, when they when Allah said that He's going to create a Khalifa in the earth, mm -hmm. and the angels retorted by saying. Are you going to create one that's going to cause bloodshed and mystery in the air? Mm -hmm. Why would they retort by saying that if they haven't seen it before? And two, why would they associate evil with Allah? I mean, if he's good, but you should have been retorting to say, are you going to create one that's good like yourself in the air? Why did they instantly start talking about evil? Mm. That's a good point um let me go into that let me remember this now um i believe yeah if i'm if i'm not mistaken this whole scenario yeah actually comes from earlier texts and i'm trying to remember was it even adam that was in the mix in this earlier text i like this topic you know this is a very good topic i like it i like it a lot um i like it a lot you can like get back it. to me though you don't have to i like it a lot no because it's it's, it's 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 a it's more complex because this story is a borrowing of of an older story ah yeah and where it comes from it's so sick like it's a sick one still it might even come from the book of enoch you know it's a sick one that is deeper than i can give you the the the, the traditionalist answer yeah but now when we go into the academics, yeah, the academics yeah. now break this story down, yeah? And I would love for us to actually delve into it because it's a sick one still to see where the story come from, how it morphed, it changed, what was really going on, why it was said, blah, blah, blah. What does the word Khalifa actually mean? How did it change throughout the years of now, the Khalifa Allah? And it's a big one. It's a big, big topic. But, I'll give you the, the simple traditionalist answer. The traditionalist answer, according to Tabari, yes, is that um, prior to human beings being created, they were the jinn kind that was created. Now, the jinn kind were the ones that were causing bloodshed upon the earth. Okay? They were warring against each other um and so forth and then the other angels had to come down and destroy them and now you know this new creation was being made to replace them and so forth that was that was the answer to that from a traditionalist perspective which was very interesting because the why was so interesting to me uh, when tabari gives that response not the response why he talks upon like the people that existed prior to humankind was that so you're saying that the jinn yeah are actually physical humanoid uh, beings <laughs> that, that are corporal that actually bleed and I was yeah. like da -da -da! <laughs> story for another day say no more <laughs> <laughs> so yeah either way you go yeah it is freaking fascinating still all right you gotta get into this excuse me yeah. hello 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 tamari el habashi talk to me king yeah, I was just thinking about joining this and getting on to that topic because it's just something that has to <laughs> go up with the jinn and mm -hmm. who they are. And 
a lot of people, you know, don't get into it. I don't know why in this world they don't get into it, but it's one of those things that who's Adam and who's Iblis and what does mm -hmm. Iblis name mean and all of that. And uh, mm -hmm. if you could get in, if we could get into that in one of your next videos, like literally the next one, I would love to join and share what I could bring to it. Okay. I, I want you to weigh in though, because you asked about a particular topic. I want to know, what do you think? Do you think Mohammed was kidnapped as a child? <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny. I, I seen in the Chinese era as well, they got something about... Uh, like the the Bedouins, I don't know if it was in the Chinese one or the one that the Ibn Ishaq won, the life of Muhammad, mm -hmm. but something about Bedouins taking him and then like, I don't know, they were worried about him or something like that. I, I don't quite remember the story though. All right. Let me get back into, I, I, I'm going to share the screen because this one's for you. This one is really for you. So I want to know, yeah, let's, 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 let's do it. Let's quickly do it. Boom. Because we pulled this up for you. Yeah? We're going to read. If everybody's seeing the screen right now, we're going to read this one. A learned person told me what urged his foster mother to return him to his mother, apart from what she told his mother, was that a number of Abyssinians saw him with her. Okay? Hold on. A number. So a number definitely has to be more than one. A number, I would assume, has to be more than two because two. You wouldn't just say a number, right? It has to be more. Let's say it could be two or more. Let's just let's just keep it humble and say two or more. Saw him with her when she brought him back after he had been weaned. Okay? You'll have to understand the story from beforehand to understand it. But anyways, anyways. They looked at him, asked questions about him, and studied him carefully. Then they said to her, let us take this boy and bring him to our king and our country. For he will have a great future. We know all about him. The person who told me this alleged that she could hardly get him away from them. I want to know, what does this hardly mean? Did she get him away from them or did she not get him away from them? So the word here is them. I like that. Them, yeah, actually is, is, is three or more in the Arabic language. I like that, actually. So... My question to you, yeah, what does this mean? Do you think she got him away from them or didn't? Bearing in mind, when she was returning him, yeah, in the previous story, yeah, let's put it here, you know, it is alleged by some, I'm reading down here now, people, but God knows the, the truth, that when his foster mother brought him to Mecca, he escaped her among the crowd. So she, he was lost amongst the crowd while she was taking him to his people. She sought, so the same story of when she was taking him back to the mother or taking him back to the people, yeah? She sought him, sought him and could not find him. So she went to Abdul Muttalib and said, I brought Muhammad tonight. And when I was in other part of Mecca, he escaped me. And I do not know where he is. I want to know, what do you think the story is a linking story? Is this talking about the same time well clearly is talking about the same time when she brought him back the second time one time says that she lost him the other time says that she could hardly get him away get her get him away from them so he was missing for a certain period of time in the other story it tells you that it was the abyssinians that were trying to get hold of him and take him and she could hardly get him away from them let's just concede that they actually took him or we cannot concede it took him and then what happens straight away they assert that waraka ibn nafal and another man of courage found him and brought him back to abdul Muttalib. and we know that waraka is linked to the ethiopian king and his minister i want to know what do you think is this story trying to tell us that this guy got kidnapped as a child <laughs> Did the Abyssinians kidnap Muhammad as a child, brought him to the king or or to a region where the king can now investigate him? Is that how he knew to send uh, his followers back to Abyssinia to a righteous king?
how did he know about this king? How did he know this king was righteous? I don't know. You know, this is my question I'm asking you. Based upon reading this, let's do some, you know, detective work. What do you think? What, what, what source is that, Kalam? That is Ibn Ishaq's uh, Sirah, but it's actually Ibn Hisham. Let's say Ibn Hisham is the one who edited Ibn Ishaq's Sirah. And so what? Is he a Sunni or a Shia? Um, he, he would fall into Sunnism. Okay, because I see some people say you don't speak Arabic, so I'm, I'm trying to find out where, what source you're reading if uh -huh. other people disagree with it. Mm -hmm. Let's see what they say. This is the very, let's put it this way. This is the very first biography of Muhammad ever written. The very Not first so. biography. Not you so. wouldn't know about, you wouldn't have a biography of, of Muhammad. There was no biography of Muhammad before this time. Okay. First biography written. Let's go. What would you guys think? So, Tamari, I'm asking you, what do you think? Was he kidnapped or was he not? You're muted, by the way. Tamari Al Habishi, let me know. This, this one's for you. You asked the question, so I want to know. Okay, you don't, let me see this. You don't speak Arabic, stop lying, because in Arabic there is a difference in the language to describe skin color versus describing virtues of a person. You made that up at uh, smile. Okay. Oh, this is to do with smile. It's not to do with me. Okay. Okay. Tell TV, hope all is well. Late to the show. Questions. Are the parts of Allah, such as hands, shin, face, etc., worthy of worship? Um, you're going to have to ask a Salafi that, you know. It's one of those ones. Um, you're gonna have to ask a Salafi that. Ask a Salafi that. Um, I don't. I don't think it's my place to even answer those questions there. <laughs> a story you just read sound a bit like the Jesus story, but nevertheless, what yeah. I, the point you're trying to make is that they did kidnap him. I'm asking the question. I'm not even gonna make the point. Okay. I'm asking the question because we see this this story. Describing the same, the same. Uh, there's two stories or two different accounts. Yeah, describing the same moment, right? Of him bringing, sorry, Halima, his wet nurse, bringing Muhammad back to his people. Right. In one story, he goes missing. Yeah. In the second story, yeah, a group of Abyssinians wanted to take the child away. Okay. It, it it drops the statement here. Where are we? Uh, it is alleged that she could hardly get him away from them. So I want to know, you know, what does that mean? Does it mean she did get him away from them? What does it mean? Like, she could hardly get him away from them. Was it hard to get him away from them? Did she even get him away from them? I want to know. Like, what do you think? Do you think oh. when he went missing was the point where the Abyssinians took him? It's a question. It's, it's like we may never know the answer, but it's a question. Uh, but, but it's a bit ambiguous, but I, I, I see what you're saying now. Yeah. He's very ambiguous. But what we do know is that he went missing. What we do know is like um, a person who is linked to Ethiopia, i.e. having Ethiopian ancestry and having Ethiopian, uh, being an Ethiopian minister. He's actually like, how can I put it? He is an ambassador, a diplomat to Ethiopia. Yeah, he was the one, plus somebody else, responsible for bringing Muhammad back to Abdul Muttalib. So we see here, one story says Ethiopians wanted to take Muhammad. Never. Um, another story says Muhammad went missing, and a, a group of let's just say at least one Ethiopian person brought Muhammad back to his grandfather. I want to know. Do you think those Ethiopians actually took Muhammad, yes or no? Uh, it sounded like they took him because why would they bring him back? That's my question. Well, it's, not even, it's, 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 it's even more so is that it is alleged that she could hardly get him away from them. So let's just say there was three, and let's just say it was three men. Said, so you know what? Boom. Could I... Uh... I missed a couple seconds of it. I had to step aside for a second, but um, can I say that this is all in light of some things that you brought forth before? Mm -hmm. um, 
One being that Hashem, uh, his wife, no, 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 yeah, his his sister. <laughs> what was it again? My fault. Okay, so yeah, um, Hashem, uh, sorry, Hashem's wife, which is uh, Salma, which is Abdul Muttalib's uh, mother, was of Ethiopian. Uh, she was a princess, an Ethiopian princess. Or yeah, Ethiopian princess. She was the sister of the of the king, Ethiopian king. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, and mm -hmm. the um something with the Chinese Sarah also testified to like the relation between Abdul Mutalib and the Najashi. Mm -hmm. So Najashi and um and I think in the Chinese one, there's one listed by the name of Seifu. And, Seifu, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And in the Ibn Ishaq Sira literature, there was a king of Yemen named Saif. Yeah. Which also, <laughs> it, it, you know, it just points to, points that same direction. So, yeah, if somebody reads this, <laughs> what else is there to say? I, I saw somebody's question also earlier. Um asking like the authenticity of the Syria literature and i guess you look at the authenticity of the Syria literature you got to look at the authenticity of hadith as well and it's mm -hmm. like <laughs> what do you think is more <laughs> more uh descriptive and powerful there you go we got we got we got somebody in here let me just see what everybody somebody has to say sahid al mahdi talk to me hey, hey can y'all hear me yeah, yeah. Hey, man, what a pleasure to, hit, to be back on Titans TV, man. It's good that y'all even active, man. This your, uh, this your brother right here in, you know, New York City representing China, trying to, trying to bring some type of build on the Muslim platform. And we don't have this, man, in America. We need this, man. So I'm just I'm just here. I just chimed in. I seen y'all was live. I said, let me come up in here and uh, see see how I can add on to the conversation. You dig what I'm talking about? Shout out to everybody out there, man. Jeez, peace, 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 peace. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go. We're getting peace. it in. We're getting it in right now. Peace, so we, peace, we, we're asking the question, right? Yes, we're, asking the, we're asking the question, did Muhammad, as a child, get kidnapped by a group of Ethiopians or Abyssinian Christians? Did the, did the Prophet Muhammad get kidnapped by some Ethiopians? Yep. Okay. We're bringing some controversy right now. We're bringing controversy. Yeah, I, I ain't never heard of that one. That's 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 a new one. You know what I'm saying? And uh, from what I understand, he uh he was raised in Arabia. You know, he had he had no father, and so he was raised by his uh, his uncle Abu Talib, mm -hmm. and so you know, kind of like that kind of upbringing. From what I understand, I don't know too much about. Okay, MPN. so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna read source text. We're gonna read source text, right? We've done it. We've done it. But I want to read it. I want to hear your opinion on this. We're, we're we're playing detective right now. Okay. Okay. We're playing detective. So I'm going to read you two accounts from the Syria literature, right? They're literally on the same page as each other, okay? All right? I don't know if you can see my screen right now. I'm going to actually maximize, you know, the text even more so, okay? So I'm reading. Uh, I'll tell you the page later. Let me just scroll down. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Let's go. Ah, the way I've maximized the screen so much is doing a madness. Give me a second. Okay, so well, what source are you coming from? Uh, 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 um, uh, Titan? Okay. This is Ibn Asak, uh, Sira Rasulullah. So, this is the very first, um, uh, Sira or biography of the Prophet Muhammad. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. All right, let's see. All right, let's go. The birth of the apostle and he's encircling. All right, let's go. So right now we are on page 72 uh, on to page 73. All right, and we're going to read. I'm going to actually just see if I can get the screen up. Let's go. Please don't do a madness. All right. All right. I'm going to highlight on the screen as much as possible. I'm scared, you know, because this might just go wrong. All right, here we go. Cool. So right here, I'm reading from, if you could see the mouse, down here. 
I'm highlighting, okay? Cool. Okay. Cool. Let's um, actually know from here. It is alleged by some, but God knows the truth, that when his foster mother brought him to Mecca, he escaped her among the crowd while she was taking him to his people. Okay? So, she's in Mecca. She's bringing him back to her, her people, his people. He goes missing. She saw him and couldn't find him. Looking for him. I can't even find this you. So she went to Abdul Muttalib and said, I brought Muhammad tonight. Okay. Oh, God, do this slowly. This is the mom. This is the mother. This is Halima. This is his wet nurse. His foster mother. Okay. The Ethiopian one. <laughs> Now this one, she is she's like a Bedouin. This one's a Bedouin. This is not um Umayman. Um, 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 yeah, it's not that one. It's another one. Okay. When I was in the that other part, when I was in the other part of Mecca, he escaped me, and I don't know where he is. So Abdul Muttalib went to the Kaaba praying to God to restore him. Okay. They assert that Waraka ibn Nafal, who is an Ethiopian Christian, by the way, and another man of Quarish found him and brought him to Abdul Muttalib saying. We have found this son of yours in the other part of Mecca. Abdul Muttalib took him and put him on his shoulders and he went around the Kaaba confiding um, him to God's protection and praying for him. Then he sent him to his mother, Amina. Okay, here we go. That is the second account of what we would suppose is the same story. A learned person told me that what urged his foster mother to return him to his mother, apart from what she told his mother, was that a number of Abyssinians... Abyssinian Christians saw him with her when she brought him back after he had been weaned. They looked at him, asked questions about him, and studied him carefully. Then they said to her, let us take this boy and bring him to our king and our country, for he will have a great future. We know all about him. The person who told me this alleged that she could hardly get him away from them. So my question is, is this story, is this two, two stories telling the same account? I.e., she was bringing him back to the family, but then these Abyssinian Christians got hold of him and said, let me take the boy. And then she couldn't do nothing about it because she was trying to get him away, but, you know, she couldn't. And then now the boy has gone missing. And then in the following story, we find out that, yeah, the boy has gone missing now. And that the ones responsible for bringing him back were actually an Ethiopian Christian. So my question is, did this, did the Abyssinian Christians take Muhammad? Did that, is that what happened there? Uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm trying to be, I want to respect the floor first before I even get in. No, we're asking you. That's you. We've, we've asked the floor already. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, see, for me, in uh, you know, RGY political party, righteously got a, a youth organization. What we stand for is the, is the teachers of the royal crown, the, ro the royal Moorish crown, which is, you know, the Octavate. We believe that their, their, their knowledge and their philosophy is more sound because of the fact that, you know, Allah says all throughout the Quran how he has certain inheritance rights for the book, like 33 6. 35, 32, uh, 35, 35, how it instructs how, you know, the Khalifa is an inheritance. The book is an inheritance. So because of the knowledge that we're getting about this prophet Muhammad uh, from all these different various scholars who have their own interpretation, Allah protects the, sanct the sacredness, the sanctity of the book by giving it an inheritance, right? Because it's like, like you see on Sarnetta, how you hear all these dudes trying to interpret the Bible, it's like you just go, you go, you just like an orgy. It's like, it's like the, the religion has become a prostitute where everybody is now trying to interpret the Holy Scripture. So a lot of protection on that if they, with the Quran by, in 33, 6 and 35, 32 by saying that the book is an inheritance. It's something that is inherited by a chosen people. And this I hear is you. The I hear you. Uh, bro, bro, yeah, I, wanna, I, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, but the question is, though, I hear what you're saying. I just want to know, regardless of you know anything else, I'm asking you about these two particular accounts, whether they're true or false, regardless if they're true or false. Do you think that this story is trying to tell us that the Ethiopians actually took him? 
Oh, Can't okay. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, it is. It, it was. It would definitely insinuate that something happened to him and his child adolescence. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll say to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna ask that now to Tamari. Like, what do you think? Is that what the story is trying to tell us or not? I don't know. This well, plus the other, um, <laughs> the other findings of the story because him, what you read earlier, like two paragraphs before the end of that it mentioned something about him being brought to his family. Mm -hmm. And then the the last paragraph kind of just leads that same direction. And then we already know who his family is mm -hmm. of blood ties to Ethiopia. So, yep. <laughs> yeah, we and go. I had the same book and I, I just, I don't know if I looked, seen that. Like sometimes it, it takes those eyes to see. You gotta look back and be like, oh snap. <laughs> What was that right there? We we've got some stuffs, you know. We have got some stuffs. I'm telling you. Um, hold on, let me see something. Stolen Kalam, couldn't it be that he, when you said that he was taken, he was he was taken from his witness, but he was in the vicinity. He wasn't taken like taken somewhere else. He was just in the vicinity. That's what you're saying, right? No, I'm saying he could have been. Uh, was he taken? Like, was he actually? It says there that they wanted to take him to Ethiopia to the king. Okay. It doesn't say it doesn't say that they did or didn't. But it I'm says that that's... From, I'm assuming from the other story that you read. Yeah. But it's we like, we, she, we now couldn't get no, sorry, we no. now find that Waraka was the one who is an Ethiopian Christian, right? Was the one responsible for bringing him back to Abdul Muttalib. It doesn't tell us the time or the length of time, how long he was missing for, mind you. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't give us any any, any indication of that. Well, we know that he was missing. And then an Abyssinian Christian is the one who now returns him. The other story says Abyssinian Christians saw him, questioned him, wanted to know about, more about him, take him to the king and so forth, back to the country. Did they do it? Did they not do it? We don't know. Okay. All we know is that an Abyssinian Christian was the one responsible for bringing him back. How long it took? We're gonna have to. We could even go back into the. There's the Chinese one that talks about it as well. We will have to find out. We don't know. We don't have a clue. Okay. We're just trying to do detective work right now. Okay, I got you. I got you. Yeah. Um, let me see something. This is another good book. Uh, I want to give something to Raf real quickly. Um. The monotheistic cousins of Muhammad's wife Khadija. This is a good see. I'm dropping you lot some some saying, you know. When we do shows, yeah, do you know how many like scholarly work we go through yeah before we can drop shows? Before we can even make claims, you know? There's a lot of work, you know. Let me just see something real quickly. Uh da -da 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 -da. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna have to go through some stuff, you know. Okay, all right. So we know, yeah. Let's just quickly put it there. Like this is Khadija's. You see, remember the the, the, the four Hanifia that we talked about? We'll find out that they all have Ethiopian connections, right? This is one of them, Uthman ibn al Huwait. Unlike Waraka, Khadija's other Christian cousin. Uthman ibn al Huraith was involved in politics. All right. And his faith was associated with his attempt to control Mecca with Byzantine backing. His mother was probably Ethiopian. Hold on, I need to tell him to turn to move his mic. I, I can't really hear you properly. Okay, um, okay. I think it's play. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Let me mute your mic because it's, it's, it's doing a madness. Okay, cool. All right. His mother was probably Ethiopian, i.e. Christian. Muhammad, who was his younger contemporary, was witness to this attempt. All right. And then we go here. Look, it's 28. For the footnotes, you have to go footnotes. When you go to academic works, yeah, where you where the, the bulk of the knowledge you need, yeah, is in the footnotes. Okay. So Uthman, he is listed among the Abna al Habashiyat. Abna. Al-Habashiyat. 
meaning the sons or the children of the Habashia. Okay, so Khadija's cousin is known to be among the children of the Habashia. Ibn Habib Kitab al Munamak, list this. Ibn Hitab, sorry, Habib Kitab al Muhabar, list this. According to Musab al Zubairi, Nasab Khwarish. So this is the Nasab, this is the hereditary, hereditary of the Khwarish. His mother was uh, Tumadir bint Umer, a free born woman from Khwarish, more precisely from the Juma ibn Asakar. Uh, Dimashk here says says that she gave her husband's two sons Uthman and Al Muthalib. But the less favorable version is more trustworthy. Okay, so over here, yeah, yeah, we're, we're we're figuring out that her cousin, yeah, is Ethiopian. I just want to put it out there, you know. Like most people don't even know this. I'm sure I've, I've dropped a lot of stuff showing like the relationships in there of these people being Ethiopian. We showed that Umar was Ethiopian as well. I.e., another one of the uh, sorry of the Hanifi. They remember, there's the four Hanifi. Zaid ibn Amr, okay, which is, which is Umar's. What is he? He's like his uncle or something like that. His mother. So, anyway, the relationship is deep, man. They're all Ethiopian. Just at the end of the day, they're all Ethiopian. Let me just put it out there. They're all Ethiopian. <laughs> to cut a long story short. Anyways, so how um, can you how can you just bring up these sources and then when you speak to Muslims they say Muhammad's got nothing to do with Ethiopia, he's never been there, he's not associated with it, but then you're pulling up sources and showing source. Don't they read these sources or what am I missing? Do you know what it is? Yeah, where a person like me is inclined to find African links, I can see them right. But when somebody is not inclined to see African links, you will read these stories. Like there might be like hundreds of stories that I read that I'm completely bypassing certain things. I'm like, oh, because oh. they'll be in the stories and we'll be like, right, hold on, hold on, hold on. The Ethiopian king just claimed relationship, yeah, with Abdul Muttalib, saying that. Oh, you are our sister's son. A normal person mm. would just read that and be like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody like me would be like, hold on. The Ethiopian king just said that your mother is my sister and your her son. Hold on. So you're my nephew via your mother. Abdul Muttalib is the Ethiopian king's nephew. Somebody like me will see that. You dig what I'm saying? Somebody like me will see it. Somebody else, like, we're just reading some Muslims, I, I need some Muslims to come on and challenge this, this what you're putting out, Kalam, because it's dangerous what you're putting out. I mean, that's, that, that's, that's, powerful, uh, that's powerful, man. I'm, 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 I'm in hundred percent agreement with that, and I would love to add on when you're done. Yeah, and then we read again, again. Yeah, there is when he receives his revelation, right? Muhammad receives his revelation. Waraka says, "Yeah, my brother's son." Mm. The whole, you know. <laughs> so hold on. <laughs> hey, wait, 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 wait. We've all read the story. We've, but well, to me, in it, like this is this should be the starting point of every single Muslim. Forget everything else that you know about Islam, right? The starting point of, me, of, of, of being Islam, a, <laughs> of being a Muslim, yeah, of even Muhammad. Let's say Muhammad being a Muslim is him receiving a vision. And some type of revelation. And then he goes to Waraka. Yeah. And Waraka now says, My brother's son. What does that mean? There's various, there's, there's various ways of interpreting my brother's son, right? There is various ways of interpreting. Uncle. I've, I've got a few ways of interpreting it myself, right? But he says, My brother's son. Mm. That's that's yes, you. In ancient African culture, he would be considered his son because in an uh, you know a lot of the customs of the Arabs and the Africans is that 
your uncle is your father. So he would be called Baba, Baba Nanu. And some cultures in, in, uh, in Africa, in the West Coast of Africa, like the Fulanis, they don't refer to their uncles as uncles. They say Baba, which like a father. You're not the second father to me. So, so and then we look at our cousins as brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? Even in the Quran, it says, you know, don't look at your, your, your adopted sons as your sons. He says to look at them as your brothers. So we're supposed to look at our even even people who are not biological, who are part of the faith. We, we're supposed to see them as brothers in the deen. It says, uh, Ikwan de, uh, deen, you know, look at them as your brothers in the faith. So, you know, in, in traditional African culture, we never saw our uncles as uncles. We saw them as fathers. So and, and, and not only that, but just uh, ch ch chiming into what the, what the brother was talking about with, with regards to the bloodlines, you know, that King Solomon married into uh, the Sheba's family. Uh, mm -hmm. And then that, that was a unique story of the Sur Saba when, uh, when King Solomon conquered Sheba and he started that bloodline. And then, you know, see, today we call them Ethiopians, but, you know, this is because of the, the European imperialism and the colonization of the words. But, to, you know, we're talking about blood. You know, we know that the, those Ethiopians are really Israelites. And so, you know, you know, coming from yes, the, 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 the seed of Menelik. And so when Muhammad sent those uh, those those Arabs to Ethiopia to get refuge, he was sending them to his family. He's really sending them to his family because King Solomon, we got to re remember the lineage. Uh, Abraham had two sons, Isaac and uh, Ishmael. And they were, you know, and according to the Quran, we we get our lineage from our father. The father is the is the progenitor. So the patriarch is Abraham. So technically, a Isaac and Ishmael are brothers. So it doesn't really matter how long down you want to go in the bloodline, you're looking at, you know, the Ethiopians to the Arabs, they like, they like family. They, I mean, that, that's their brothers. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's really hard for mainstream to accept a black Muhammad like it is for them to accept a, a black Jesus. But the reality is the white man has become such a, a great conqueror and, and, and white, a white out uh, a, a con artist to try to, uh, to tell the people that we are literally uh, being... Uh, 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 bamboozled by mainstream Islam and you know the, the, the type of things we're learning in the mainstream about Islam and our prophet is that he's a white man like Jesus and so I definitely sure. say what you're saying uh, what you're saying uh, brother is, is very controversial and I know mainstream ain't trying to hear it, but I support it 100% I got something to add in on to the brother if I could just for a second um, so they yeah the mainstream wouldn't be so excited to accept the black uh arabia and there's many of writers who have written on the black arabia and there's many black arabs who exist to this day and um there's some documentaries people do about how like black arabs are in arab countries still getting the press or things like that or maybe marginalized or whatever but they will look just like us and still still uh be overlooked and uh What's funny with the Solomon thing is um, they and how it relates to what Brother Kalam is sharing is that uh, he said uh, Salma bint Amr, who who claims who who by the Sira literature has a relation to uh, uh, the Najashi. Banu Najar is her listed tribe, like mainstream wise, when people study the family of the Prophet and stuff. And uh, Banu Najar translates to sons of the carpenter. And uh, <laughs> people in biblical scholarship would know who the carpenter is. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to talk about like Joseph, for example, and the lineage that's gi given to Jesus and Joseph. Well, it goes down to Joseph since, you know, if you want to say like virgin. We, we go by the virgin birth story. So, but there's a lineage given to Joseph in the Bible and it goes right back to who? Solomon. And uh, it, it's, it's very profound. Like when you read this story with that and, and knowledge with the whole Menelik thing and how they treat, how they treat something like, like the Kebra Negus as something with, as a completely like mytho mythological story or something like that when arabian history the language script all comes from the sabian and like the arabic like the first arabs were the sabians sheba is happens to be the origin of uh the arab culture 
and writing script and alphabet and everything. So <laughs> it takes it all over. There's a writing about uh, King Caleb going uh, in, in like the year like 15, five, uh, 500 CE going to uh, Yemen. And in Yemen, they had a Judean uh, Israelite uh, kingdom there, which was governed by or it, it was being it was a like a government set up by the Ethiopian one west of it right across the Red Sea and uh King Caleb is like there's a uh, there's some history of the King Caleb of Ethiopia going to uh Yemen and fighting a, a small war there or maybe big war and they have this all this in the mainstream and uh <laughs> it's there for people to read but when it comes to the story of how things will be looked at now there's narratives that will be crushed and like even something like the lineage is given now like the lineage given to the prophet muhammad peace be upon him would have to be looked at differently and i saw one of the last videos that was up on this page where there was a uh an alleged scholar or I, i'm not familiar with it brother but there was a guy who came on talking about ishmael and hagar and saying that muhammad is descended from her but the funny thing is there's a there's a hadith in the shia kitab al kafi that says that the imamate for example goes uh from descendant to descendant and there there's a there's a uh, that hadith explains how from each uh from each uh prophet the imam it had gone down from abraham to isaac to jacob and that allah have made them imams or leaders and then that they have inherited that from them bloodline to bloodline i mean uh, uh generation to generation which would point out an Israelite lineage. And that would just shock the whole story of him being descended from Ishmael. So all of this stuff has to be looked at in, uh, in honesty. And I think, I think uh, when, when that was being brought up, uh, the guy who was speaking on the whole thing was speaking from a, a place of like, like, like in the last video that I saw on this page, uh, it was like a guy who was speaking from a, from a place of authority. And I, I guess he just got asked a couple questions, which made it kind of flip on back. And I appreciate this channel when I look into it because uh, it really is bringing up that side that has to be looked at without any fear of a fundamentalist uh, idea holding it down. But if anybody has anything, anything to say about that, please share. Peace, peace to the brother who just spoke. You sound like you're from America. Yeah, I'm from Maryland. <laughs> oh, what, man? Come on, talk about it. 301, 301. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I used to be out there in uh, Clinton, Clinton area, Prince George's County. Burning yeah, I can tell. <laughs> I yeah. can tell from the from the from the, from the speech. <laughs> but that's but that's that's a wonderful thing to connect with a, 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 a you know a brother from Maryland on on Kalam's ch channel, you know, talking about Islam because you know here in America we don't have this type of depthness. Uh, and, and, and devotion and type of sincerity of Islam. Although in Philadelphia, you have one of the biggest Islamic, um, out, you know, numbers, the biggest numbers in, 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 in black American Islam is right there in Philadelphia, but the, the, the sincerity is not as the brothers in England. So I'm like, this, this channel is necessary because one thing about our people particularly is we suffer from a lack of knowledge. Like the same way the Israelites put the Bible on the streets, you know, um, I'm over here in, in the Bronx doing the same thing all alone with the Quran, trying to tell people that the Moors, you know, the Moors bloodline is black. We're black. The original Arabs is black. And we have to now do the same thing 
is fight the narrative of the mainstream to try to put a white because the reality is black people don't have no jobs here, you know, and particularly uh, during Ramadan. I know yesterday I went to the masjid and uh, it was an African masjid and I walked in there, you know, they, but they look at me like I'm a drug dealer. You see what I'm saying? So when I walked in there, the man said, you know, what, 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 what can I do for you? You know, what, what do you want? I'm like, what do you mean? What do I want? You know, like, like I'm a Muslim. First of all, you're supposed to judge me by the content of my character. You're supposed to see and study me, you know, just observe me for a little bit. Don't, don't just come at me like that, you know, as a and Ram, during Ramadan. So then, uh, I, you know, I got a little wild up. I, I said, you know, the Prophet Muhammad was never the type that um, just look at you and say, you know, what do I, what do you want? You want, you know, you, if you, you know, the, the Allah says in the Quran, you know, never uh, just just throw tax fear on somebody. You never just call someone a cap. You just kind of observe him for a little bit. If, if, if he is a Muslim, he gonna move like one. So I kind of was protesting in the master yesterday, and then uh, and then the undercover came out, and I was like, "Look at this Negro house nigga, uh, undercover Muslim." And you know, you know, in the Quran, Allah says, "Don't take the kufa as a wali." So a lot of these masters in America are actually in cahoots with the United States, who was doing uh, uh, atrocious things to the people of Yemen, Syria, and Palestine. And right here in, in the United States, you got a bunch of masters uh, doing tata <laughs> They got undercover cops. So what I'm saying is, brother, is that, you know, real Islam is on the streets. And so for, for me, like the ISUPK, we, we RGY, we here in the streets and we preach the, uh, the Quran, um, you know, in, in the same way the ISUPK preach. We teach about the royal family, you know, about this, this royal hereditary that you see in Israelite culture. The same uh, uh, um, traditions that the uh, that you just recited off of the Kathy Hadith is the same that it, it is in Surah Saba, right? King David gave it to King Solomon. Like this is a type of inheritance. The Prophet Muhammad said that uh, Ali to me is like Harun is to Musa. Only he's not a prophet. Like there's a, a type of aristocracy in Islam where this is nobility, this high, uh, uh, refreshing, high classness. And you can see the remnants of that in Nigeria, right? I studied the uh, Sokoto Khalifa, the Sokoto Empire out of Nigeria. There was a man by the name of Zegu Usman then Bogey out of Nigeria in the 19th century, just before the white man came in. He actually had these, uh, the same mentality that, you know, the Khalifa is supposed to be an aristocracy. We give it to our, you know, a royal blood. It's not something that can be elected. It's not an electoral vote where people can just say, you know, we choose him. Because, you know, it's just, it's, that's just ridiculous. So um, the same way you see Ethiopians today, you can look at some of their uh, ceremonial processions and they have this like these umbrellas full of color. They decorate their horses with this 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 very uh, finery. Like it's fine. You just look at how Ethiopians carry themselves. The priesthood. You'll see that same kind of priesthood in Nigeria. So you can see like the Moorish royal family, and you can see like the Israelite royal family in in in, 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 um, in, in Ethiopia and Nigeria. So I really really appreciate uh, Colin for this platform to even talk about this type of Islam because we don't have these type of conversations in America and they won't allow these kind of conversations to be had because then black folks will have a knowledge of self and that will give them confidence of themselves which will cause them to want to stand up for themselves and that'll destroy white supremacy. So um, man, we want to send, send a shout out to Tyler, man, uh, and all the Muslims in England man. we want to say yeah man we, we, we see, we see y'all I want to give a big mom. salute on that too <laughs> yeah, mom than we do in the, in the West. So I just want to say shout out to the England Muslims, man. We really, we, 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 we trying to catch up to y'all, you know? Jeez. Salute, salute, salute. I Listen, family, family treat, family treat. That's what everybody know. Like, we're literally going to be closing down the next six minutes, right? We're not trying to go over the two hour mark. So what we're saying is this. If you've got any last questions or comments or whatever it is, yeah, drop them right now. Tag Titans TV. Hit us up with a super chat and we will highlight it on the screen. Otherwise, um, you can wait for us to go off air and join. But I would like for you to join us on air. The link has been shared with inside of the um, live chat section. Join us there. Okay. But I'm not trying to be here too long. You know how these shows will go, you know, they'll go on for three hours and then there will be like another five hours of listen, Heru. Yeah, I heard you, man, were on the show, yeah, for hours. Yeah, me and back, me and the medicine man, we caught another body. Yeah, how long, yeah. how long were you on the show for whilst it was off air? 
would you would you estimate about half four half four in the morning yeah my goodness yeah so family if you want to come on in and you don't want to be you know live on air or anything like that trust me there's there's man them in the back chat that will be here we'll be catching some jokes we'll be talking we'll be breaking up some knowledge we'll be going hard yeah so let's get it all right but if there's nothing else family yeah let me close down the show what are you saying Tamari, talk to me. My man said, um, one more, uh, one more thing, Kalabo. Did you, Warwick, was he a Christian? Sorry? You know when you were talking about Warwick? Yeah. Is, yeah. His name? is he a yep. Christian? Yes. He said to be a Hanafi and a Christian. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. He said to also be, he could, he, he read and was taught the Torah and he could read. He could translate the Torah and the uh, Christian, the, the the gospel, into Arabic as well, which is very uh, interesting information. That's it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, the brother mentioned something about, um, you know, like how they try to put it. What, what was he saying? In America, if we try to like look at Islam and the Quran, for example, and the tradition of following it outside of that box, you know, that uh, you will face some type of pressure and like where people want you to basically conform to it. And uh, I appreciate you on your channel saying something about the Hanif or not something about it, but really talking about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was looking into the ge'iz of the word Hanif and how they translate it to pagan. <laughs> but when you yep. look at it properly, it probably has a perfect connotation to like apostate. <laughs> someone who is an apostate from religion, someone who leaves mainstream religion. <laughs> mm -hmm. And... <laughs> And I, I was somebody who was reading this Quran and how it uses the word Muslim, Musadiq, Munzir, uh, <laughs> Mu'min. But they only take one of those words and make a, and have a religion out of it where it'll say a Muslim, which is what? A person of peace. And uh, a Musadiq would be a person of justice. A Munzir would be a person of dedication or devotion to the Most High. Uh, and a mu'min would be a person of faith. And if that if there's that many different uh, terms in the book, then it would be another testimony to the fact that this book doesn't even have a, uh, a, a religion presented, but a, a, a characteristics are being presented. And uh, tenets of, of what a believer is are being uh represented and you know what i think on one of my next shows yeah what i will do is going to the hanafi really break that down no i don't know i don't know should we go into the hanafi i talk to me family should we go into the hanafi because there is a lot there is a lot and what I mean by that is Hanuk. I want to go into Hanuk or Enoch or Idris or, you know, and the book of Enoch. I want to do, go into the book of Enoch, yeah, and really see what Islam is really saying. I think that would be so interesting. Prepare because... to do it. <laughs> agreed, Prepare agreed. To do it, please, by all means. Because... And I will bring out some quotes here that's going to be so interesting because when I asked the question, yeah, what religion was Muhammad? What's the answer? Let's say pre-visitation, pre-vision pre, pre, pre and post-vision, what religion was Muhammad? That's my question to you guys. What's the answer? Hanifa, it's the culture. Hanifa, Hanifa, that's my answer. All right, who said that? That is Saeed. Saeed. Okay, Tamari, 
Talk to me. What's the answer? You're muted, by the way. Uh, no religion. It, the, the deen, even to say in the Quran that like there's a deen of Islam. A deen, we say Maliki Yom Adin, master of the day of judgment. So we're talking about judgment and decision making. So if your judgment and decision making is peace or submission, as it would say, then that's not a religion. <laughs> All right. Heru, talk to me. What religion was Muhammad pre vision and what religion was he post vision? It was a pagan um, common narrative. And. Mm -hmm. um, uh he was um a muslim a muslim after i think okay well, we're gonna get into it we're gonna get into it actually because we're gonna see whether i've got some interesting stuff obviously let me see do i have it here no let me hear it. let me see if i can bring something up um all right cool yeah, let me bring this up. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Let me bring this up, actually. And this is why I even asked the question, because I, I think I might have a show for this. Share screen. Uh oh uh oh we're running out of time. We're running out of time. Oh, no, we're running out of time. Give me a second. Let me quickly show this. All right, cool. So where are we here? Ibn Kathir? Ibn Kathir, look at this. we got here Ibn from Ibn Kathir. Um, Surah al Nabawiyah. Volume 1, page 283. The scholars differ over the devotional prayer of the prophet before his mission, whether he was following some religion and what it, what that was. Some say that it was the religion of Noah. Others suggest that of Abraham, it being the most similar as well as the most powerful. Others say that of Moses, yet others that of Jesus. Others say that he that all that is established is that he did have a religion and that he followed and observed it. Okay? So, scholars are saying that you know, against popular belief, Muhammad had a religion uh, prior to Revelation. Okay, some people say he was a Christian, i.e., follower of Jesus. Others say he was a Jew, follower of Moses. Others say, you know, he was a follower of Abraham or Noah, which would fall into the Hanafi camp. Okay, uh, it says here for the interpretation of the statements and the circumstances in which they were made, one should look elsewhere in the works of the on the origins of Islamic jurisprudence, but God knows best. Okay, uh, M. J. Kista, uh, this this is this is um, from the workbook. Ta sorry, from his uh, article, article, yeah, article. Tahanuf. It says here opinions varied about whether the Taabud, okay, uh, the worship, was according to the Sharia. Of Abraham or Musa or Isa or Noah or Adam, or according to the Sharia of some of his predecessors, whether he did or did not follow before his call any other Sharia. Okay, and you can find this in Zarqani, Shar al Mawahibi, al Jahiz, al Uthmania, um, al Mawardi, and so forth. Yeah? All of the foot, all the footnotes, all of the quotations of where you can find this stuff is all here in it so we're, we're just putting it out there so i think one of our next shows is going to be like what religion did muhammad follow uh pre pre-revelation and what did he follow um post-revelation and that's going to be very interesting it's going to be very interesting and we're going to find out you know hey kalam brother kalam when you trying to have that show because I, I would love to be there man Hey, ah, sugar, let me think. When can we do that show? It could be Wednesday, possibly a Wednesday show, you know? Okay. Yeah, I think we could do that on a Wednesday show. Same and time? Same time like right now? Same time, same time. Inshallah, inshallah. 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 All right, okay. Cool. So. so, yeah, family, we might have to go into that. Um, We might have to go into that indeed. And we'll get into the book of Enoch and see what that's about. Um, and I want to really go into depth, yeah, to do with the vision that Muhammad had. I want to go in depth with that, you know. I do. So, yeah, we've got a few shows. We've got a few shows. Because I already know, right, based on this, there is the four motifs that I wanted to talk about. Yeah, this is to do with my, my um, Ramadan series. The four major topics that I think we should be discussing for the whole month of Ramadan, yeah, is the 
All right, let me break this down. Let me see. What have I got here? Yeah, it's the first revelation story. Okay. So there is, it's broken down into like four different narrations, right? There is, it's, it's broken down into four different narrations. There's the Tanhanuf narration, i.e. Muhammad going up into Hira, you know, into the caves and doing a particular form of worship. I want us to really dig deep into that. Yeah. Then there is the Ikra narration. Yeah. Where he's now been told to read and he's been given um you know uh, a piece of writing that's covered with a cloth then i wanted to go into the ufuk narration this is where he sees a particular being on a throne in the horizon i wanted to go into that and then there is the warka narration what does warka now say to muhammad and how does that cool down Muhammad? And how does that now confirm that Muhammad is an apostle of God? Uh, these are the four things that I want us to be talking for the whole of Ramadan. Everything else should literally just be mute for the whole of Ramadan. Because if we're celebrating Ramadan, yeah, we need to know why we're celebrating Ramadan. What was going on? Because Ramadan, technically speaking, is not even an Islamic practice. It is a practice that Muhammad was following before revelation. He was going up into the caves on the mountains of Hira and practicing certain things for a whole month, supposedly, and then gave to charity to people that's poor and needy and fed people. That's what he was doing pre-revelation. Um, pre so I want us to go into that. We should really be going into the origins of the Quran, the origin of Revelation, all of that. That's what we should be doing throughout the whole month of Ramadan. Because if you're celebrating something and you have no understanding or reason why you're celebrating it, it's like, what do we call it? Vain worship. It's really vain worship. So yeah, for the whole month, I think that's what we should go into. Let me know, family tree, let me know if you, if you like that idea or not. Yeah, that sounds like some heavy topics, so. Yeah, because we're going to be going to Merkaba. Yeah? Oui. We're literally going to Merkaba mysticism. We. Oui. Okay, that's, that's what it is. Tati, tati. I heard you said earlier that the first revelation, or the second one, when you got the Quran, and, and you said um, it was a piece of paper with a cloth. So he was told to read and not recite. Or oh. was it, what was it? What was your take on that? Of course, we, we, we'll do it. We'll do it right now. We'll do it right now. I should be gone. Let me just quickly do this. <laughs> this is how you don't keep me here, you know. Let's 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 see it. Let's see it. Uh, here we go. No, not to, okay. Here we go. Let's get into this. Share screen. Let's go to the Acrobat. Let's go into the Syrah right here. Okay. Uh, let me make the screen less big. Okay, cool. All right. Okay. Right here. Okay. So it says here, he came to me, said the apostle of God, while I was asleep with a coverlet of brocade, whereon was some writing. Okay. And said, read. I said, what shall I read? He pressed me with it so tightly that I thought it was death. Then he let me go and said, read. And so forth and so forth and so forth. What shall I read? And then he finally says, you know, the very first uh, surah or very first five lines of the Quran. Okay. Read in the name of thy Lord who created, who created man from Alak. I'm going to translate as Alak rather than a blood co coagulated. Read, thy Lord is the most beneficent who taught by the pen, taught that which they knew not unto men. Okay, right here, he's brought a writing and is to told to read. Mm. Again, most Muslims will never know about this because most Muslims believe that the Prophet Muhammad was illiterate, didn't know how to read and write. Yeah, yet they have a saying that supposedly come from Muhammad. That you shall seek 
knowledge from the cradle to the grave. Mm. So you're telling me that the person who's told you to seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave for 23 years didn't learn how to read and write. Some Muslims say that he could read and write, but it's the kind of Arabic that it was written in that he couldn't write. I think they're no. just kind of... No. What, it, what, it, what, it, what it was is that it was, an, it was a form of apologetics back in the day. So how apologetics work is like, uh, you know, Christians would be like, yeah, you just stole that from the, you stole that from the, uh, the Bible and, and the Torah. No, no, he never, our prophet couldn't even read. So I don't know what <laughs> you're talking about. So he couldn't have re got it that way. He must have got it for our revelation. Oh, okay. Yeah, think, is there. That's how that's how polemics and and, and so apologetics work. I think that, I think that, I mean I think I mean that he did, he just didn't have a worldly education, and that's and that's kind of no. like to be no. to put it in a nutshell. Like yeah. Muhammad, Muhammad. Like let's look at let's look at uh, Elijah Muhammad, like Malcolm X. They had a fifth grade education, but you see, when they came down to interpreting the, that that word. You, you know, it was you, almost you like, know what it is. I would like it's, to share. It's it's not even that deep. It's not even that deep. There is a certain word within there is a beautiful article yet again. I would love for you guys to read it. It's called Ummi. Okay. Mm. Ummi. In there, it shows you how this you know trail of thought developed. Okay. There's a word in there where he says that he is an Ummi or, or prophet to the Ummi. Okay. And it shows what the word mean, means. It shows all the usage of the word Ummi, what it means. And how it got changed into meaning that Muhammad couldn't read. The Ummi was always juxtaposed uh, to the people of the book. Meaning, the original meaning of it was that simply he was My a people. Gentile prophet rather than a prophet of the people. Last for me. I gotta say it. I gotta say it. Gotta object. <laughs> I, I love it. Yeah. Like, we're gonna have to go. Like, this is what we should start doing. Yeah. Start reading okay. academic works. Yeah. That goes through the history of a word, how it's used in the Quran, how it's used in Arabic, how all those things that you can just see. And you're like, rah, really? Is this what happened? And there's so much of that that goes on. But anyways, uh, let, me, let, me, let me not harp on. Let me quickly say uh, we're gonna keep it moving. And then we're going to talk again soon. Hopefully, we might even do a show tomorrow. But I spent too much time on here. I'm going to say family, peace, and love. Hold on one second. Peace and love. <laughs> okay, cool. Peace and love, family. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Remember, here is the link. Come join us for a little bit before we go off, before we fully like just retire. Yeah, but love for everybody who joined us. Love for everybody who dropped a super chat. Love for everybody who kept us um, entertained with inside of the comment section. Love to everybody on the panel that's come on during this time of Ramadan, and we shall get it. Peace and love, family. Last Peace words, last everybody. words. Peace and love to everybody on the panel. It's, uh, it's good to, to be reunited with y'all. Shout out to the Muslims in England. Shout out to my Muslim brother in uh, Maryland and to Heru. Salam. Yeah, peace, bro. All right. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. We out. Ah!